Hi there! Today, you and I are going to become travelers. Time travelers, in fact. We'll need a time machine. You probably noticed that big picture window when you walked in. We'll use that. Hidden in the view out of the window is a remarkable story of change, whose characters include oceans, dinosaurs, and volcanoes. Today, as we look from left to right, we see the beautiful rugged landscape of the Rocky Mountain foothills. This landscape is the end result of the processes that have operated throughout the last 1.7 billion years. To understand this incredible amount of time, it helps to understand the rock cycle. Fortunately, the story of the rock cycle is neatly told by the rocks on the other side of the window. The rock cycle is an important part of geology. All the rocks in the world can be grouped into three main types, metamorphic, sedimentary, and igneous. The processes that link them are burial, uplift, and erosion. The rock cycle explains how one rock turns into another. A sedimentary or igneous rock could be compressed and heated to be turned into a metamorphic rock. Or, forced far below the Earth's surface, melt, and erupt onto the land to become an igneous rock. Any rock that gets uplifted to the surface gets eroded and eventually turns into a sedimentary rock. The oldest rocks found near Golden are metamorphic rocks. Metamorphic rocks are formed when other rocks are buried deep in the earth where there is great heat and pressure. Let's get into our time machine and travel back 1.7 billion years to a time when Golden was a very different place. Oxygen in the atmosphere was a relatively new thing, and the only life forms that existed were single-celled organisms. Golden itself lay at the bottom of a deep ocean. Sand and clay were deposited in the ocean by large currents that carried sediment from the land. As time went by, the sand and clay were slowly buried deep into the earth. So deep, in fact, that they turned into rock and that rock started to squish and fold like toothpaste. The temperature and pressure were so great that new minerals actually formed. The collision of tectonic plates formed and uplifted mountains, and erosion eventually exposed these rocks at the surface. Mountain building, uplift, and erosion are another important part of the rock cycle. We can still find some of these rocks if we drive just a short distance into Clear Creek Canyon, which is just off to the left when we look out the window. Let's leave the Precambrian behind and travel forward to the Cretaceous era and look at sedimentary rocks. 70 million years ago, the view out of our window was very different. A shallow sea covered the Great Plains and Golden sat at the edge of a beach. Beaches are one of the places where sedimentary rocks can form. Let's fly over a swamp near the coast. We can also see rivers, lakes, and the shoreline. The sedimentary rocks forming here are made up of sand, silt, and clay. These particles represent the chipped remains of rocks found further upstream and carried here by the river. As the river approaches the coast, it slows down and must deposit its load of sand, forming a delta. When the river floods, the clay it's carrying gets trapped in lakes on the delta, and swamps form, killing trees which eventually turn into coal. Let's fly into one of the swamps and take a closer look at life on the delta. Floods provided plentiful nutrients for life on the delta. Here we can see dense groves of cypress trees growing in the water. Numerous types of plants lived on the delta, including paddle leaf plants and climbing ferns. There were even flowers. The plants supported a wide variety of insects and even dinosaurs. What we see here is a triceratops grazing. Ferocious T-Rex also lived on the delta. Look out! Fortunately, our time machine has brought us forward in time 6 million years to 64 million years ago. T-Rex and his friends have all died, and mammals are rapidly taking their place. 
The Front Range Mountains are forming in the west, and the sea has disappeared to the east. We are now looking at the first rainforest. The trees here are different than the ones we saw in the delta six million years earlier. Let's fly above the trees and investigate the third rock in our rock cycle. Igneous rocks form when molten rock called magma cools and hardens. 64 million years ago, the rocks at the top of North Table Mountain formed from erupting lava. From this vantage point, we can safely watch the eruption and cooling of the last of the three lava flows. Our time machine has taken us to 14 million years ago. By this time, more than 2,000 feet of sediment had been deposited on top of the lava flows we just watched cool. Here, we can see the layers of rock that formed from that sediment. The rock layers next to the museum have been pushed up by the uplift of the Rocky Mountains. These faults also formed during this uplift. The white line represents the surface of the land as it is today. Here's the real cross-section, which is somewhat more complicated. Here we can see that the rock layers next to the museum were actually rotated 90 degrees by the uplift of the Rocky Mountains, and now sit vertically. During the last 14 million years, erosion removed thousands of feet of overlying sediment, forming the modern landscape. Erosion is another important part of the rock cycle. Now, let's watch erosion at work. Clear Creek has cut through the once continuous lava flow, creating North and South Table Mountain. Rivers removed thousands of feet of sediment and the modern landscape formed. We can now see all three rock types exposed at the surface. While rivers have certainly done a lot to change the landscape, people have too. Our trip through time is almost over, and our time machine has brought us to Golden in 1890. Mining activities started here in the late 1800s for both clay and coal. You'll notice there are few houses, trees, and no highways. We're looking out the window at the White Ash Coal Mine. The mine flooded in 1889 forever trapping 10 men within its depths. Just off to the left out of the window, we can see the clay pits. Clay was mined here and used for bricks and porcelain until the 1940s. Remember the delta 70 million years ago? Clay was deposited in its lakes. The walking trail will take you through the clay pits where we can see several fascinating features. The Walking Trail is a national natural landmark because of the fossils present there. Sometimes a tree fell into one of these lakes and its trunk got preserved in the clay, becoming a fossil for us to find and learn from. We can also see palm fronds preserved as fossils. Remember the Triceratops grazing? We know they lived here because we can see their footprints where they walked through the swamp. The view out of our window shows the importance of geologic time, the rock cycle, and the changing landscape. You can see the three types of rocks, metamorphic, sedimentary, and igneous. Remember that one type of rock can turn into another through the processes of burial, uplift, and erosion. Now you can take a walk on the geologic trail where you can learn more about the rocks and the processes of the rock cycle.